Greetings from the GNU Linux Users Group. Welcome to the very first video regarding binary exploitation, aka pawn category in CTF. Pawning a system means gaining control or ownership of a system. This is simulated by running a vulnerable binary on a server and providing you with that binary to exploit. Well, that is okay, but what is a binary? Before we find the answer to that question, let's have a look at the age-old programming language C. C, the successor to programming language B, is a high-level programming language that was originally used to construct utilities running on Unix. The code written to the left is just an example of how C code looks like. The first line of text highlighted in blue is known as the include statement, which is a preprocessor directive to utilize the code written in the header file. In this case, a standard input output header is used to access functions such as printf and scanf highlighted in green. The yellow texts are known as data types. For instance, int refers to an integer and texts in red are known as literals which are constant statements in a programming language when the c program is executed int main and its contents are the first to run but raw c code isn't what is executed because computers don't understand any instructions except if given in zeros and ones we use a software known as compiler, which converts source code in C to its respective binary or executable. GCC is the default compiler present in Unix or Linux systems, which stands for GNU Collection of Compilers. Passing the file that stores the source code, say hello.c, to GCC will create an executable which when executed runs with the logic written in hello.c. However, this conversion isn't a one-step process. It involves several steps such as compiling, assembling, and linking. The first step of the process is done with a preprocessor, which expands all the preprocessor directives into their original code. The expanded code is passed to a compiler in GCC to produce an assembly code, which is a lower level language as compared to C. The assembler present in GCC is used to assemble this assembly code into an object code, which is then linked with external libraries to produce the final executable or binary. Let's have a look at this on the system. This is a Linux terminal. And currently you can see that this directory is completely empty. We shall create a file named hello.c. In this file, we will write our own hello world program. We shall now save and exit from here to compile on GCC. To get an executable directly, we will pass the file to GCC like this. It will create an executable file named a.out unless otherwise specified. Let's now execute it with dot slash a.out. It's printing fine, but we are more interested in how it looks when GCC 
is compiling in steps. Let's have a peek. Using the E flag along with GCC will output the pre-processed code onto the terminal. Okay, let's now try assembly. Using the S flag along with GCC will create an assembly file. In this case, the assembly file is named hello.s. Let's have a look at its contents. Now, let's convert this assembled code to object code with the C flag. This command will have created a file named hello.o, which is the object file. Let's first give executable file permissions to hello.o. If we execute this file, the program will not execute as it is still not linked to external libraries. We shall use the linker present in GCC to convert this object code to a linked binary. Now, doing just GCC hello.o would work, but we want to specify the name of the executable this time. Otherwise, it will just overwrite a.out and we would not know the difference. Our final binary is hello. Executing this will print hello world from Shilag. Now, it is important to understand that programming languages and binaries were present when there were 32-bit systems and still exist where we use 64-bit systems. With types of architectures come binaries. Here you can see x86 or 32-bit binary and x64 or 64-bit binary. Binaries are also further classified to processor types such as Intel and AMD. If we want to figure out what kind of binary we just created, we can use the file command. It shows that hello file is an elf 64 bit binary. But what is elf here? Formats of executables in Linux are known as elf binaries which stands for executable and linkable format, while in Windows, it is known as PE or portable executable. As for Mac, it follows a Mac O format, which stands for Mac object file. However, across all architectures and processors, all binaries have these fundamental segments, namely stack, heap, BSS, data, and text. Stack consists of stack frames. Stack frames contain all the data for a single function call, such as parameters, return address, and local variables. The base of the stack is at the top of memory and goes towards lower value memory addresses. Heap is the segment for memory allocation at runtime. This segment goes towards the top of memory. So in a way, heap and stack share a certain region of memory. BSS stands for block started by symbol. BSS section stores all uninitialized global and static variables, while data segment stores initialized global and static variables. And finally, text, aka code segment, contains executable 
instructions for the binary. We can see this in the binary that we have created earlier. Using the OBJ dump tool, we can view the sections of the binary that we have created earlier. Here you will notice that the stack and heap segment aren't present. This is because stack and heap segments are created at runtime or when the program is run. So this is it for this video. Thank you for watching. The next video will be an assembly refresher. I highly recommend you to go through the basics of assembly. Until then, keep hacking and may the source be with you. Back from the dead. Oh, 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 oh,